Yo, what up YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're doing the top five cards of each color and multicolor from the new March of the Machine set. Uh, we're trying to do this pretty quickly, but usually it ends up taking a few minutes. But basically I'm gonna go over all the cards I believe are good and constructed. Uh, mostly standard, but also mention other formats as well, okay? Let's go, let's go ahead and jump right in. We'll start, start with the white cards from Mom. Uh, coming at number five, I have Seal from Existence. The three mana Oblivion Ring. So three mana, when it comes into play, exile a non permanent the opponent controls until it's the battlefield. So it's basically Oblivion Ring that also has wards. It's hard to remove. Oblivion Ring's always been kind of a staple. And this one is just harder to move. And I feel like it's, it's, I feel like it's going to see a lot of play in uh, standard for sure. So just a solid removal spell in general. Um, next up, we have Knight Errant of Eos. This is a five mana, four, four, Human Knight. So it does, that, it does have a relevant creature type. It's also a human. It's not a soldier, but still. It uh, has Convoke, which means you can tap creatures to uh, help cast it. It says, this thing enters a battlefield, build the top six cards of your library, and you may reveal up to two creature cards. With mana value X or less from among them, where X is the number of creatures that helped Convoke this card. Uh, this is a card advantage spell for, for white decks. It is a aggressive card as, as well. You can swarm the board, help cast it, draw a few cards. I think it's pretty sweet, especially with uh, rotation coming up. I think after rotation comes up, uh, we will lose a lot of lose Thalia and stuff, and I think this will be a nice uh, thing for new white decks. Coming number three is Archangel's Elspeth. Uh, it's four mana, four mana, four little planeswalker. Plus one makes one 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 soldier with lifelink. Uh, minus two, it gives two counters to a creature and gives that creature flying forever. And minus six returns all non-land permanent cards with man value three or less from graveyard to the battlefield. I think I think Elspeth is uh, also not very good. I think she's I think she's good. Uh, I think she'll see more play in mid-range decks than aggro decks, just because aggro really wants Dahlia right now, and Archangel Elspeth doesn't really play very well with Dahlia. I do think, uh, and that being the case, I do think. Elspeth is worse than Wandering Emperor. I think we'll see more Wandering Emperor. However, there's no reason we can't play both. So I'm sure we will see Wandering Emperor alongside Archangel Elspeth. Uh, I like Wandering Emperor more. This card's also very good. Uh, the life gain is very relevant. It makes, it makes life linkers as well. It's a pretty big deal. Pretty big deal for a mid-range deck. But it is worse than Wandering Emperor. But once Wandering Emperor rotates, come uh, September, this will see, I'll, I'll see more play. All right. The next card, it's a little a turn our heads. <laughs> Invasion of Gobakon. Listen, when this, en this enters play, it's going to uh, exile a card in the opponent's hand. It may cost two more. Basically, a spellbinder. Uh, then it, has, it also has a uh, re loyalty or battle, whatever you call it. And when you kill it, it will transform into uh, Light Shield Array. This is an enchantment that says at the beginning of your end step, uh, put a counter on each creature you control that attack this turn. And it has uh, sacrifice it to give your creatures hexproof and destructible. I think this is great for an aggro deck. You're able to slow down your opponent <clears throat> and then attack it as well. Basically, basically have an anthem, then grow creatures, like, grow creatures bigger, and it's a way to protect, protect yourselves versus, uh, versus Wrath. Seems like one of the strongest battles so far that I've seen. So, seems pretty powerful. And coming at number one for white, I have Elish Norn. Elish Norn. The other one was good. I think this one's good too. It's four mana. Uh, the five toughness, we've seen how, how problematic five toughness is. It's kind of hard to deal with. We've seen that with Shieldred. While, Elsp while Elish Norn doesn't like drain the opponent back and forth, it's still, it's still, it's still pretty good. It, it, it still punishes the opponent for playing the game. Which is whenever a source opponent controls, deals damage to you or permanent you control. A source controller loses two life once they pay one. It, ha it heavily incentivizes like not, not attacking, especially if you're also attacking. And then her, uh, her ability is you sacrifice three other creatures, you exile Elish Norn, and return, return to the battlefield uh, transformed. I feel only sorcery, and the backside is very powerful. Uh, it's the Argent Etchings. So chapter one, you incubate two five times. <laughs> they, they, they transform transform them all. So basically you'll, you'll, you'll incubate... Uh, and all these tokens, and then they'll they'll become creatures right away. 
giving you like an army of things to attack with or block with. Uh, and then if you if they live, next turn they all get plus plus one, and then double strike, which is really absurd. Like that's because it, it's giving you uh, five tokens, five two twos. It's going to make them three threes and give them all double strike. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, and then the if the, if your opponent is still somehow somehow alive, the final chapter is going to destroy all. All the permanents except for the artifacts, lands, and Frixians. And then she will come back flipped on the other side. So this card is pretty brutal. Seems very good. Uh, we asked Wizards to make white good, make it relevant, and it looks like they have done that. So there we go. That's my top five for white. Uh, next up, we have the blue cards. Coming in number five, we have Moment of Truth. A moment of truth is just a two mana, kind of like telling time, find what telling time does. It looks at the top of the card your library, puts one in your hand, one in the graveyard, and one in the bottom of your library. Not too exciting, but it helps dig. Also, if your deck is reanimating or has use for the graveyard or even playing things like Corpse Appraiser, this is a great way to, to fuel that. Um, it is a, a, sweet, a sweet card that digs that digs as well. It's like, it's like Anticipate with Upside because it can bin things. Not super, not, 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 not insane, but let's put in at number five. Four, number four, we have Rona, Herald of Invasion. Two mana, one, three. It says, Remy cast a legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. Uh, he's basically a Merfolk Looter. If you remember, if you remember, remember Merfolk Looter, one, one, you tap and draw a card, discard a card. Bass through toughness, which is, which is relevant. Uh, it's not, and, and, and you keep doing it. It's not crazy, but I do I do like it as a uh, looter effect. And uh, her ability or its ability to transform costs five or six mana. And when it transforms, it becomes Rona, Polarian Obliterator, which is a five five with trample. It says whenever a source deals damage to Rona, that source's controller exiles a card from their, their hand at random, uh, from their hand. If, it, if it's a land card, you, you put it on the battlefield under your control. Otherwise you may cast it without paying its mana cost. It's pretty. It's it's one of the best obliterator obliterator type cards we've seen. If you're able to fight with it or trigger it, your opponent can your, your opponent basically can't block this. The backside is kind of absurd. Uh, it's really hard to like de deal with, uh, especially if you if you fight one time with this, the game is probably over as well. The card is uh the card's pretty sweet. The card is pretty pretty sweet and powerful. Get them puppers. Hope to make sure the Frixians aren't in my house. All right, coming up next is a Ephara's Dispersal. This is a three mana instant. It costs two as a, two as a cast if, if it's already an attacking creature. It returns the creature to, to its owner, owner's hand and surveils to. Again, surveils, I think, is stronger than Scry. Because surveil allows you to basically bend cards in the graveyard, which is, which is value if you are using the graveyard. This card is, again, not crazy, but it is a one mana, like Fading Hope type deal that surveils as well. So, and it's always going to trigger as long as it's attacking. So, I do like this one. <clears throat> and then, after that, we have changed the equation. This is like a, we've seen a lot of make disappears with upside recently. This is one of those. It's a two mana spell that says, says counter a spell with mana value two or less. So, it's going to counter a spell with two mana uh, two or less. And then, also, it will counter a red or green spell with mana value six or less. This is good, obviously, early, and it's good mid, late versus red and green decks. Green is kind of not the greatest in right now, uh, but, but there's plenty of red cards, like Fable, uh, see, that they see play, so. Black is still the most dominant, but this card is still a very good card. Uh, main and sideboard. But if green, gets, if, green, if green gets good, we're ready with change the equation. Coming number one is Fairy Mastermind. This is a... Uh, this is a champion, world champion card. Uh, the two mana two one flash flying. It says when our opponent draws their second card each turn, you also draw a card. And you can force people each everyone to draw a card. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, the one drop circle sailor. This card is better in older formats where people are drawing cards like with, with brainstorm or what have you. This is a it's like a, it's like a two mana narset in a way. This is stop them from drawing cards, but also rewards you uh, if they 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 draw a lot of cards, and you can just draw cards for uh, itself. Card card cards card's powerful. Temple card. 
So, all right. Next up, we're, we're going to see the black cards. Number five, we have Render Inert. Uh, so this is a sorcery spell. It moves up to five times from target permanent, and you draw a card. This is this, this can remove things like obviously you want to remove things like uh, planeswalker counters are ideal. We can also remove counters from uh, battles, allowing you to flip them, uh, and draws a card. So the way I see this is you, if you're playing a battle, a battle deck with black in it, <clears throat> you may want to play this because it re replaces itself in in a, in a transform the battle right away. It's one of the few cards that is able to transform battles quickly, especially if, obviously they have uh, five or less five or less loyalty or counters on them. So number four is a bloated processor. This is a three mana three two. The sacrifice on the Frixion, but a possible counter on bloated processor. So the bloated processor dies, incubate X, Rex its power. This is just, I know it only sacrifices, sacrifices Frixions, but it is a sack outlet for that type of deck uh, that doesn't cost that doesn't cost mana, isn't once per turn. It does have a restriction on, on Phyrexian, but I feel like if there's, a, if there's a sack deck, people can find it. This is an excellent card for that deck. Um, people are always looking for things, ways to sack creatures without restrictions or, no, or not once per turn or not have to put mana into it. This is a good way to do it. And it rewards you, and it rewards you after it dies as well by leaving, a, by, by leaving a body. Next up we have Ayara, Widow of the Realm. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. That says sacrifice, you can type it, sacrifice another creature or artifact. Ayara does X damage to our creature to target opponent uh, or battle, and you gain X life. Rex is sacrifice permanent mana value. So this can ping the opponent, um, ping a battle. And it, it feels like black has a lot of ways to shoot battles, which is a little worrisome because black already has a lot, lot black already has ways to like deal with enchantments. Uh, the only thing it can deal with is artifacts, but it feels like we also get ways to do, it also gets ways to deal with battles, and that's a little, a little worried because I feel like black is just already really strong in standard, so this is a little, you know. Little scary. Then you, then you pay six mana or five mana and two life to transform her. And her backside is Ayara, Ayara Furnace Queen. Four four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target artifact or, or creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Great way to reanimate the things you, that you you have flung at the opponent, or even get things like a Traxa. Uh, usually, Traxa dies after you play her, so. By by opponent, if your opponent usually kills her, but giving giving attacks a haste and drawing cards right away and give and get getting life is is pretty huge, pretty huge. Next up we have uh, Pylon. This is the four mana removal spell we've seen for creatures or planeswalkers like Vrasis Contempt and Eat to Extinction. So this one has, this, this this one has Convoke, so you can cast it with the, with the creatures. And it also serves surveillance too. So they pushed eat to extinction. They pushed eat to extinction. They made it easier to cast, um, and also lets you surveil too. This is also a little scary because it's against the black card. And it's a very powerful removal spell, and I'm not, I don't think black need, need more help. But here we are. Black has got more help. And coming number one is Shieldred. I think Shieldred is man one of the best praetor, one of the best predators for standard. On par with Elish Norn for sta for standard for standard, uh, she's kind of kind of nuts actually. So five mana for a four five with with menace. It says when she ETBs, each opponent sacrifices like, a non-token creature or a planeswalker. So kind of like uh, Elish Reborn, which was also five mana. Well, this, this also comes on a four five body. Uh, I think it'd be five mana to transform her, and she becomes the the true scriptures. And right away, her chapter one says, for each opponent, destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So her front side comes down, kills something, they, your opponent picks, and then we, we transform her, you get to kill something else, this time you pick. Um, and then her second chapter is, each opponent discards three cards. Three cards. Three. Like, it comes down, you kill something, you flip it, you kill something. You make them discard three cards. Uh, they mill two, but who cares about milling? And it's just, it's just value everywhere. Like, even if Shieldred comes down and they kill Shieldred, 
her ETB still triggers, right? It's just, anyways. And then uh, her last chapter is put all creature cards from all graveyards on the battlefield under control. This is like this. This is a planeswalker ultimate. Uh, and if that's not enough, it exiles and comes back as Shieldred and triggers her ability again. So, yeah. Hope you all aren't tired of black being king because black is still gonna be the best, the best color standard. There you go. This card is really, 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 really good. And it curves, and it curves, and it curves from other other shoulder. This card is it's just value everywhere. Anyways, anyways, moving on, moving on. The red cards <clears throat> coming number five. We have rampaging raptor, four mana trample haste. Uh, you, you can pay three mana to pump it. Plus two plus zero on turn, and, and the raptor comes kind of reminds me of questing beast. So it says whenever this thing deals combat damage to an opponent, does that much damage to target planeswalker, to play controls, or a battle. So it, it helps you. What's, what's cool about this card is it helps you to, helps you take on battles while also damaging the opponent or uh, killing planeswalkers. So it's and, and it has trample and haste. The red card that's four or less that has trample and haste uh, with upside is. Is 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 gonna be it's gonna be very good, and the fact that you can like play a battle and then flip it immediately really helps. Um, next up, we have Blood, Blood Feather Phoenix, two mana, two two. This thing can't block. And if you cast instant or sorcery spell, uh, can deal, just deal damage to an opponent. You can pay one. If you do, it brings back from the graveyard into play and it gains haste. It's kind of like a a weaker is it Phoenix, but it it might it might enable that archetype in standard. So. Let's you loot, loot, loot away and we animate it with uh, just casting spells. And for, for those for those of you who don't, 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 don't know, don't remember, Soak the Flames is a also a very strong magic card in red decks. Uh, it's instant, it does four damage. It is four mana, however it has Convoke. And four damage is a lot for red deck. <laughs> They'll usually do like 10 damage to you or so, and Stoke can very easily close out the game. Um, I obviously and and you don't features to help uh, cast it. This card was a staple in standard in the past. I'm sure it's in the same way. Uh, now, <clears throat> so invasion truck here. Speaking of battles, I think this is also I think this is probably better than the white one, but it is the, the one that at least all binders. It's kind of hard to see this. I wish I need, I need to like turn it. I turned it. Basically, this is a, basically this is basically a bone crusher giant. So it's two mana, it's gonna deal two damage to two plus two plus X damage, breaks the number of dragons you reveal, but you don't have to play any dragons, right? You can play no dragons at all. It's gonna do, it's gonna deal two damage something, uh, which is just uh, two mana two mana shock with upside is good because the backside is pretty powerful. The backside is a defiant thunderball. It's a four-four flying trample. It says whenever dragon in control attacks, it does two damage to any target. So for the front side you have Bone Crusher Giant, and the back side is harder to hard to, to like to cast the Bone Crusher Giant because you have to attack it. But the reward is it is it is very good. The four four, dra four, four dragon that just starts killing your opponent or killing creatures. So that's sweet. Um. All right, and this one, or brass. This might this might this might not, might not be that great in standard. We'll see. But this card is very good. If you're following a Bergy, kind of reminds me of that with just insane upside. Anyways, Urbrask is a 4 mana 4 4 with first strike. So it says whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, it does 1 damage to our opponent and you add 1 red mana. So if you're casting burn spells, he's going to hurt hit your, opponent, hit your opponent more while making your burn spells cost less. And then, and then he has the cheapest activation to transform. It's just 1 red mana. So, in like some formats, if you have 5 mana, I might be able to put Urbrask, cast three three red spells, like three one drop spell, red spells, and just sorcery straight and transform him. You need to cast um, instant sorcery for that turn, at least three. Um, but then when, when he does transform, you get the great work. So immediately you're able to do three damage to, to an opponent, and all creatures all creatures they control. So, so, so it's gonna be like anger of the gods, just one sided though, and and all the creatures. Uh, Tapper two is three treasures. I'm pretty sure we all we're all aware how strong tre treasures are after seeing it come from Fail the Mirror Breaker. Um, and the final chapter is until turn. It lets you cast instant sources from both players' graveyards. Uh, 
yours and your opponents. And they'll, they'll transform back. This seems like a strong card for older formats. Uh, we'll, probably see, we'll, probably, we'll probably see play standard if we have some good one drops or burn spell or two drops. So this is this is this this, this, this goes for my card for like the highest upside for mono red. All right, green cards. Green get anything? Let's find out. Invasion of Chandelar. So this is basically a uh, restock. Restock is a card that re regrows two cards from graveyard. This one regrows three. So it returns three cards from graveyard to your hand. Um, they're permanence though, it's not anything, it's just permanence. But the backside is also pretty relevant, which I like. The backside is Leyline Surge. Uh, it says at the, beginning of, of, at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a permanent from your card, you put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So mid game, late game, you're regrowing three cards. It's also kind of easy to take down, it's only four. Then you, and then this thing like, it's enchantment. So if you're able to untap with it, you can cheat things into play. Uh, I don't think, I'm not sure if it's going to be playable though, still after after March. These cards aren't, like, I feel like black got better cards still. But anyway, that's, that's, that's number five. And number four is Invasion of Ixalan. And it says, uh, one second. Whenever, <laughs> whenever Invasion of Ixalan, see? Can we read it myself? I memorized the other ones. I blame. Nice. Okay, we're, we're cheating a little bit. Let me pull this up. These silly battles, man. All right. Bailing Surge. Invasion of Exelon, two mana. When Invasion of ETBs, the type of cards of your library, you reveal a permanent card from among them and punch your hand. That's why I put it there. All right, so it's, it's basically two mana. Uh, stirrings for a permanent, which is just, it's not, it's not crazy, but it digs, it digs pretty deep and it has a, and it has a, an upside by, after, after you defeat it, you get a little dinosaur, 4-3 trample, whenever you cast a spell, this thing is interesting on a turn, which is not crazy, but the front side is also, the front side is also good enough, like, be able to just, uh, get a card and flip this, it just, just card advantage, obviously, two for one for two mana. Two mana, two mana, not, not, not that bad. Pretty good, actually. Then we have Ran and Realm Breaker. I do think this card is overrated overall. I do love it. I do like this card, but I do think it's slightly overrated, unfortunately. Just because, uh, so she's she's three mana for four loyalty. She has the Chromatic Lantern text, which lets all your lands type for any color. Uh, her plus one makes a land a three, three, Hexproof uh, creature. However, she the, the land doesn't untap. The land is not untapped, which is relevant. Which means if you play your turn three, she will not she will not untap the land, and uh, be able to pr protect herself. On top of that, her her protect mode is literally like, are you really going to like trade your land for a blood tithe harvester? You know. No, probably not. Uh, but the minus ability is powerful, but it's not quite as powerful as we would like it. Like it. Her minus two is she mills up three cards. You put a permanent card from among them into your hand. So if she put like any permanent card from graveyard into your hand, I would love. I'd, I'd, I'd give this. I'd give this much higher rating. Uh, if she untapped the land, I'd give it. I'd give, I'd give this much higher rating. But she doesn't do either of those. Um, that being said, she still seems solid in like decks like Grease Fang. And uh, and pioneer or explorer, you mill three, you get your, you get get back get back a grease fang or whatever, and you can maybe build parhelion as well, and it gives you another way to like uh, attack the opponent with a planeswalker. Uh, and the ultimate is my seven. You get you get an emblem with you may cast you may play land cards and cast permanent spells from your graveyard. That is the one. But one that is one thing. Like Ren does all kind of fast if you're able to play her early. I got turn two with Landwar Elf, or even turn three, if one isn't doing anything. But the thing is, in standard right now, everyone's doing something. Everyone's doing stuff. I do like the the static text of lands tap for anything. Not crazy, but you know it does help for, for sure as well. But this is this card. I think is, is I think it's fine. But I think people that are screaming like it's too overpowered or whatever I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't think it's going to be crazy like broken or anything. Coming at number two. 
It's a common. Three mana, two, two. An overgrown pest and there's a battlefield. Look at the top five cards in your library. You may reveal a land or double face card from among them and put it into your hand. Why is this number two? So it's great. All right. This is, listen, the Contagious Vorak card, RAC's play in uh, Domain. Uh, this is obviously the 2 2 9 3 3, but it still trades, still trades with Harvester. But what's cool is it doesn't always. It can like get you a non-land, and a flip card isn't only, isn't only battles, right? A flip card a flip card could be um, like a adventure, not adventure, no, not adventure, but what what, what are the other other flip cards besides battles? Regardless, this has battles. This thing gets gets you battles, gets you lands, it gets you the transform cards like Shieldred, right? So basically, like if you play this, it can get you Shieldred. Or any, the, or any of the Praetors and get you, uh, get you Fable, or the Mirror Breaker, right? Get you any Transform cards, like Werewolves. So this card, it's, it's just sweet. It, gets, it helps find lands and helps you find card advantage. Uh, so yeah. And coming at number one, it's our boy, Polarukonos Reborn. Three mana, four, four, five. Solid, with reach. <clears throat> you can't ask you can't ask too, too much for three mana. So three mana for four five with reach, and it costs seven transform, or you can pay two life. Uh, four five four five is a pretty big deal. You can't cut it down. You have to use, you have to use extra removal on it. Uh, it blocks all these little little <laughs> creatures, uh, and then if you are able to transform it, it becomes Polrukados Engine of Ruin. Unfortunately, Polrukados gets. <laughs> can you imagine dying? Then being reborn, and then being completed by by Phyrexia. Polarukonos has seen it all. Anyways, when you transform him, uh, it becomes a 6-6 six, six, reach lifelink. Pretty sweet. And then whenever Polarukonos engine of ruin or another non-token Hydra dies, make a 3-3 three, three green and white Phyrexian Hydra creature token with reach, another one with, with uh, lifelink. So it's kind of like a Wormclaw engine in that regard, right? So it'll make a, when it dies, it'll split into a reach token and a lifelink token. Uh, so basically mimicking mimicking a worm coil. Uh, obviously that's not, not not death touch, but still still, still still solid card. All right, now everyone's favorite cards. The multicolor and battles. Coming number five, I haven't. By the way, I just want to say with with, with multicolors, there are a lot of multicolors. Obviously, I can't fit all of them in the top five, but there are a lot of good ones. This is what I have um, on my top five. I have number five. Invasion of Tovada. This comes into play. It reanimates a permanent spell. Basically, puts a permanent spell, a permanent card. I have graveyard into play. This is great for things like Omniscience, Ugin, uh, Kaya. Kaya is in these colors. We have Portal to Phyrexia in these colors. Um, we have the Behold the Multiverse in these colors as well. It's also can be grabbed by the Mizzet Reborn. If, you, if, 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 you're, if, 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 you're, if you're into that. Right, you can run me Atraxa as well. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a good reanimate spell. And on top of that, after reanimates, like the, the front side is pretty solid. But the back side is good too. Like if, if you if you do if you do manage to like kill this thing or defeat it in battle, you get the broken sky, which is an enchantment. This creature control get plus one plus zero on life link. Uh, then that being replicate, you make a potentially one one. You make one one uh, spirit, but with this thing out, it's two one. And I don't know, honestly, I don't know how any, how any, any deck really beats this if this sticks around, right? You, you, basically, it pumps all your team, this is my flank, and spitting out bitter blossom tokens that are two ones. So, like, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. The backside is pretty powerful along the front side. I, I, I really like this one. I, I, I really like this card. <clears throat> Coming in number four. I may be dreaming. I may be hoping and dreaming, but I'm a fan of uh, this this team. Zimone and Dina. Three mana, three four. This is how we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna get gross spirals. Three mana, three four says whenever you draw your second card each turn, her opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, so basically, if you're able to draw like opt or whatever, you're able to um, drain the opponent four point life swing. And then it says you can tap her, sacrifice another creature, and you draw a card. So basically, by doing this, you will trigger the first ability and drain. 
And this is when you put a land card from your hand on the battlefield tapped. The Grow Spiral. Uh, and if you control eight or more lands, you can do it again. At the very least, this is a super sweet commander card. Um, but I'm hoping, I'm really hoping this is good enough to make a, some, some green deck. Uh, because I love ramping. This card ramps. It's kind of wonky to do, like, you have, sacks, you have to sack other things to, to, to do it. But I do, I do like this card. I'm a fan of it. All right, number three, Invasion of Armagon, Aragon, Aragorn, Invasion of Rhinos. So two mana, you, can, you discard a card, you make a, you make a, a treasure token, and it has five, uh, just, just, just discard a card, make a treasure token, and draw a card. So basically, it's like a small fable of the breaker. It ramps you as well, which is great if you're trying to, like, uh, reanimate on turn five with a card. Like, if you're trying to discard, or turn, or turn four, rather. If you basically discard a Traxa, this allows you to reanimate her usually on turn turn four. And if you defeat it, it becomes a three-four trampler. Uh, it says uh, when the center enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, search for a land or a battle card, reveal it and put it in your hand. So it seems like a it seems like a solid loot card that also ramps you for two mana. Uh, I think I think that's great. We haven't had a two mana one really right yet, right? We've had seize the spoils, which has been. Not really great. We've had a uh, big score, which has been solid. Big score is solid because it's instant. Um, it gives two treasures. This one is two mana. It gives one treasure and just you know, helps out. So I think it's very, very good. All right, next one. Man, this card. At first, I didn't realize this card, how good this card was. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But anyways, this one is Jeru Gir and Hazret. Five mana for five, four. And if you have one, one or two cards in your hand, uh, it has Vigilance and Haste. And it says whenever this thing attacks, let the top of this card to your library, you may exile a legendary creature card from among them, but the rest of the library in your order. And this is the part that I read over the first time. It says until every turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Without paying its mana cost. Without paying, you know? There's some very powerful legendary things, <laughs> right? Uh, Eldrazi come to mind, of course. Eldrazi is like one of the strongest things, but even uh, this thing, this this thing is it's, this thing is also a human, right? It's a human, which means it, it fits into the Jota deck. Jota, the Jota, the, Jota, the five color Jota deck uh, helps cast Jota, helps find helps find other things. <clears throat> uh, it seems like a I don't want to say a a better Winota. It's obviously not, 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 not better, not better than Winota, but. This thing is, is, is scary. And it, it can also attack if you don't if you have more, more than one card, right? But essentially a 5-4 haster that's gonna cast another three spell when it attacks is massive. Like if you are hellbent and you have no cards in hand, and you top like this card, uh, or even after after wrath, this is this is a lot of damage and spells. It's like a quarter of your opponent's health and another spell. Um, pretty good. Coming number one. Uh, for the team ups, I have uh, Errant and Gidea. Gaida, Gidea. The angels. The human angels. This is, this is, this is, this is, has two relevant, this has two, reg, well, wow. Two relevant creature types. Two. Human and angel. Also has flash. Any card with flash is very powerful. <laughs> it just makes it, makes it better. Has flying. I mean, look at the top card of your library at any time. Fantastic. You may cast spells with flash or flying on the top of your library. It's also three mana. This thing can be hit with Coco. Um, it's good in tempo decks, obviously, allowing you to like cast your spells off the top of your library and also um, basically card advantage, right? Or even cast like Filled Mystic if you want counter spells off the top of your library or whatever, whatever you want to do. This, card, this, this, this card's sweet. And look at this thing. <clears throat> this human has a gun. Has a gun. And it's cocoable. Cocoable. All right. So this set, this set had no. We had no uh, lands really. Um, uh, we had some some artifacts. Nothing for top five. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing crazy. So that is it for the set review, or the top five each card. Let me know what you think. If you have any thoughts, you think one's better than the other. Um, if you're also watching this, hoping this goes live while I'm doing the early access event, which is on Thursday, come watch the come watch, come watch Bruce of New Decks. If not, you can, 
you see the decks I brewed with these cards and more over on my personal YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. I'll catch you next time, all right? Bam. Also, if you shop at coolstuffings.com, use code Ollie5, save 5% off, and get a sweet Ollie token. All right, peace out.